Aloha, it is Mila once again here to talk to you about sex and human trafficking. Um, now I'm coming to talk to you about who this affects the most, marginalized populations as well as everyday people. Um, but the big one is going to be marginalized populations. So when it comes to sex trafficking, those targeted, kind of like mentioned before, are going to be the poor, um, the uneducated, the immigrants, but it can also happen to anyone who is having a rough life. Their runaways from home are like one of the biggest populations of people who are affected, specifically runaway teens. So I wanna get into more detail about exactly what marginalized population means, specifically to Hawaii and the islands. Marginalized populations here are gonna be the local people. Um, I know it's kind of tough to take in on that level, but those who have been, those are who have been affected the most by our history of Hawaii and who are in the highest poverty levels, um, highest homelessness levels, um, highest affected by drugs and a lot of other things. And all of these things lead to being more vulnerable to being trafficked, whether it's for sex or human trafficking. Although on the island of Oahu, it is normally more specifically sex trafficking. So the average age and the most common age to be trafficked is 11 years old. That's really intense. 11 years old is gonna be the age where you're barely starting to figure out what being alive means. And if you're having a rough life and in a rough place, it's you're at a very vulnerable state for an outside third party to come in and manipulate you into thinking that this is what you need. A very common form of how Johns manipulate people into sex trafficking is through something called boyfriending. So it starts by someone wooing, whether it's a male or a female, normally female, wooing. So for that, for this case scenario, I'm gonna be using she terms, um, wooing her into falling in love. They buy her things, they show her love and affection, things that a lot of people haven't felt, especially when you're growing up in a rough life or maybe you do have love, but you've never had things, right? Material things. And since we live in a society where that's so, such a big deal for us in a consumerist nation, it can feel like you're lacking something in life. So when somebody comes in and offers you money and love and attention on all these things you haven't had, you fall in love or they manipulate you to fall in love, especially when you're such a young age. From that point, they start, they essentially ask you um, to start doing things for them. Like, oh, well, if you love me, I would like you to go do this, which obviously normally includes sexual favors for other people. And then eventually it turns into a system in which you're doing it every night and consistently and they have you trapped. At times it also does turn into beatings and and violence, things can happen. It's not always a situation where these women and these children are like taken from their homes and brought to an uh, alternative la location <clears throat> and brought to an alternative location where they're being sold. Um, it can be as simple as, as the kids sneaking out every night or in a lot of situations when you have parents who aren't as aware because they're busy or they're working or some parents just don't care, they're not gonna notice when their child is gone consistently, which again, leaves these kids in a very vulnerable position. So in addition to being trafficked by a John or being manipulated by a John, it's sadly very common for it to be someone you know and a family member. So of all the trafficking cases in Hawaii, one in three are done through a family member and four out of five are done by somebody that they knew prior to being brought into this um, trafficking system. So very often, especially in Hawaii, it's military families. I don't mean that to discriminate against military families, but it is just a fact. You also have, like mentioned prior, this being a very popular hub. It's not always military within military. It can be military trafficking, friends of military children, as well as outsiders just not in the family, but still someone you know, traffic trafficking to friends and eventually leading up to other forms of trafficking. Trafficking is a conversation that needs to be had. It's not one that we want to have, but it's one that is deeply important to have with your younger siblings, with your families, with your loved ones, talking about how these things can happen and how they do happen so that awareness begins to be spread specifically amongst the local community um, communities. 
it's direly important because a part of what makes people so vulnerable is when they don't know that this can happen. When they don't know that a friend, a family member even, could come to them from a seemingly loving place and take them to a place that, in which you are the least loved because they're using you for your body. So I know it's uncomfortable, I know it's hard, but try to have this conversation, start having these conversations. If you wanna learn more, I'm happy to have conversations with, with you. If you don't wanna have a conversation with me, look it up online. This is something that we need to be learning about so that we can prevent this from happening and at least do something. Cause for one, helping one victim, helping one person, preventing one person from being trafficked is already making a difference. Thanks for listening.